Welcome to the Iron Giant. I'm at the base of one of the oldest iron mines in the world where for one weekend every year, operations cease and this becomes the setting for the single most difficult hard enduro competition on the planet. Behind me, 500 competitors are about to attempt to ascend, descend and crisscross this massive mountain all in the hopes of reaching the finish line. But actually, only a handful will do so. This is Hair Scramble, and you're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome to Eisenhurst, Austria, which is usually a quiet little village to the home of Erzberg, also known as the Iron Giant. But for most of these competitors, it's going to be misery and heartache. I'm Sal Masekela, your host of the Red Bull Signature Series. Out of 500 riders here at the start line, less than 3% will actually finish. That's right. Last year, 14 crossed the finish line, and the year before that, 7. The Iron Giant is on! Sal, it certainly is. Hi folks, Lee Diffie and Motocross Hall of Famer Ricky Johnson with you. And Ricky, if you're into extreme enduro, this is it. This is the king right here at Ayersburg. Every rider comes here and it's different because you want to get out front as quick as possible, but you got to realize you're going to be working out all day long at 100%. Getting out front early is what Seppi Fally has done. As we go on board with Johnny Walker, you know, I've raced in Baja, but this stuff is treacherous because not only do you have the, the dirt itself and the rocks and everything, but you have this man-made stuff. you got tractors on the left, cliffs on the right, and now the other riders that are crossing back and forth. So it's not just one line like a motocross track. You know, you can use your imagination as much as possible and try to clear double jumps like that. Wow, that was quite the move from the KTM man Walker, the winner two years ago as he went by Seppi Fally very quickly. Well, see, in Supercross, you get to go out and practice and, and look at a jump a couple times, but these guys get one shot at this whole course. So a move like that is very brave, but let me tell you, it will make a difference. The onboard from Gomez there saw Seppi Fally and Gutsiet go down early. Lee, you look at these hills, they got to come up to them, and then they open up, open up as much as they can and take a big run. Here we see Walker making that jump. Unbelievable that he's taking chances like that. Is that too aggressive too early or that's what you need to do? Hey, this is Ayersburg, man. Anything counts. Sometimes, you know, a champ to a chump and just one bump. Sometimes you're a hero. Sometimes you're a zero. But right now, he's opened up quite a lead. Look at the gradient. How graphic, how steep it really is. And already Johnny Walker has opened up a handsome lead. Let's take you back a few moments ago and show you how the initial start looked for defending winner Graham Jarvis. When it comes to Enduros, most of the time it's you against your machine, but at the beginning of Ayersburg, it's just like Supercross where you have everybody line up and you're going back and forth. Here we see Jarvis get caught behind a couple riders. He has to hesitate, and now coming to this first hill, he has to make a decision. Who do I hit? Who don't I hit? And how do I approach this hill? And watch what happens. Gets stuck on the side of the hill, goes down, but being the champion that he is, he doesn't panic, pulls the bike around, rolls down the hill. Well, let's take another shot at that, turns around, and right up the hill he goes. But the big problem now is not just the course, but the other riders. Just showing, even as a defending champ, you have to take a breath. 
and really think about the big picture over this 20 mile course. The second wave is away and right in the middle of that is a man who led this race last year for a brief period, Romain Geoffre. That's why qualifying is so important. You want to be in that front line as quick as possible. And Ricky, take a look at this. Over 20 miles, this is the 20th edition of the Erzberg Rodeo. And some signature points on the circuit we will show you during this program. The machine, the elevator, the bathtub, Carl's Diner, all signature points in Austria's largest iron ore mine. This is brutal. That's why they call it the Iron Giant. 14 times KTM has won this event, and that's the bike that Johnny Walker rides right now. It's time to check in with Tina Dixon. This course is definitely a navigational challenge as well. So to help mark the way, officials have taken these blue signs and placed them along the track. But I talked to the riders and they were saying that these are located more in the tight trail sections. But if you look behind me, those open mine roads, there's not a lot of these signs and there's potential to get lost. In fact, that's what happened to Graham Jarvis a few years back. He got turned around and the end result was disqualification. So for the riders, follow the signs, hit all 23 checkpoints. But guys, it sounds a lot easier than it is. For sure, Tina, as we now see Ricky, the third line released. You know, what you got to remember is that they don't give this time back. Like Baja, we start off, if you're a minute behind, if you finish 30 seconds behind that rider in front of you, you win. Here, first person across the line wins. And you do that by getting the best start. And Johnny Walker wasn't the first off the line, but he was the first to make his way to the front of this pack very quickly and efficiently. And so far, Ricky, it's paying off beautifully. I love the way Johnny uses his body when he's entering the corners and he's using the angles to help him out. Johnny rides a lot of motocross back in England and he's using that to his advantage. Watching him climb this hill, he's a tall guy, he uses the angles to save his energy and right now doing a beautiful job. And Ricky, these guys as we watch the battle for second with Corey Greffender and Andrew Noakley and a bunch of others in there, what kind of heritage would serve you best here? I mean guys bring trials experience, they bring enduro experience, motocross experience. What's the magic combination? That's a pretty simple equation. You want to be a motocross champion from the start to the first turn. You want to be an enduro guy up the first hill. You want to be a desert racer as you're climbing up out of this out of this gravel mine. So you have to use every fiber as a rider just to make it around, let alone let alone go around fast. And with everything we've already seen, our race leader, Johnny Walker, has approached just the first of 23 checkpoints over this 20 mile course. And he enters the forest for the first time. Now is time when you become an enduro rider. You have to look around, you have to use the environment, not just the rocks and the gravel, but now you have trees and a lot of other dangers out there. Plenty of experience in the form of Knight, Lettenbickler and Gomez coming but it's Andrew Noakley, Canada's Corey Greffender, and England's Johnny Walker up front. And Ricky, he's coming up to a significant challenge, the water pipe. One of the cool things that I like about Ayersburg is a lot of guys still run two strokes. The big, fat, the big fad in racing right now is four strokes for supercross, motocross, but here they run the two strokes because of the rotating mass. They're easier to stop and they're a much lighter machine. Here Walker's out in front and you see him going through another checkpoint. And right now at this slow-mo, you got to see how hard he has to work between leaning forward and leaning back. You lean forward too much, you lose back traction. You lean back too much, you're going to wheelie. He's got the right balance. Do you get in awe of that gradient and that climb, or you just pick a point at the top? How, how, what's the strategy to tackling this? That's exactly what they do. They, they look at the top and they try to find a point and aim for it. But these guys are so far ahead and so advanced. When they're riding, it's a lot like you and I walking. We don't think about right foot, left foot. Johnny Walker is so much in the zone, he just makes it happen. Walker is the star at the moment, but who else should we look for? Sal Masakela tells us. Last year here in Erzberg was a story of redemption. Graham Jarvis finally stood atop the podium after being disqualified three years in a row. Unbelievable. Can Jarvis repeat? 23-year-old Johnny Walker hopes not. The 2012 champion is back after completely missing the podium last year. My front wheel just dropped and it just took all the water in. And then that was it, really. You know, it's racing. And then we have Andreas Lettenbeekler. He finished in second place here four times. 
Will this finally be the year he gets the monkey off his back? From the USA, Cody Webb is making his hair scramble debut, and he's got a chance. He's the first American to ever podium at the European Hard Enduro events, and he could be the guy to finally get the Stars and Stripes on the box here. And lest we forget that 2005 and 2006 champ David Knight has returned. And the master of the British Empire also wants glory of once again being the fastest here in Austria. All of these riders are having a stellar season so far. All would like nothing more than to become the 2014 champion. But if 20 years of racing here at the mine has taught us anything, it's that the mountain always has the final word. And three of those riders we saw in that feature with Sal, we see right here, American Taylor Robert and his regular competitor, Cody Webb. And right behind these guys as they tackle the water pipe, Ricky, Graham Jarvis on the comeback trail. Jarvis, last year's winner, has to work his way back through the pack. And right now, the, the course is starting to deteriorate a little bit. But as you can see, as they come to the checkpoint, they want to get in and out as quick as possible. At this point last year, 153 riders did not even make it this far. As our race leader, Johnny Walker, fast approaches the next challenge, the bathtub. Ricky, what's impressed you about Walker so far? If you watch him, he was very, very aggressive at the beginning, and now look at him, he's very smooth on the throttle, paying attention who's behind him, what's going on, because they don't have radio communication, so he's out there running solo, but he can also look back and see if someone's catching him. As Walker, the first to attack the bathtub, and makes it look easy. You know, last year you mentioned that 153 riders hadn't even made it this far. But this year, as you can see, the sun is shining. There is still a lot of water standing around, but with the sun shining, it gives you that crust on top, helps you climb these hills. Canada's Corey Graffender. And just like Walker, nicely completed. Another GoPro on board with Lettenbickler. We hear him hit the power at the base. The two-stroke power pulls all the way up the hill. Easy daily. And another section completed. Could this be the year when Letty, as he's affectionately known, can win? Here's Spain's Alfredo Gomez. He's made up good progress. He's fifth at the moment. Ahead of him, Andrew Noakley. So this is a good fight. Once again, that little bit of sunshine has made the bathtub much more climbable. A lot of guys not even having a problem. We heard about champions like David Knight taking three shots at it the other day, but right now everyone seems to be wheeling up this hill. And for American Taylor Robert to be in sixth at this early stage in his very first hair scramble in Austria is a very impressive performance aboard his factory KTM. He's chasing the likes of Gomez and England's Andrew Noakley and consistent as ever, Andreas Littenbeckler, Corey Griffender for Canada, and then Johnny Walker continues to set the pace. Before he began though, he had a chance to catch up with our Sal Masakela. Do you always hang out in front of big trucks like this? <laughs> no, it's not my usual place. It's not your usual place? No. Big truck for a big star, because you're that guy. You won this race at 21 years old, two years ago, against guys with a ton more experience yeah, it was unbelievable. I, I didn't expect it, you know. I just came here. You know, the year before I got the podium, so I didn't, I came here, you know, thinking I was gonna get a podium, but you know, to actually get the win was unbelievable. How difficult was it for you then last year? Didn't have the best year. Anything that went wrong, went wrong, you know, so. First corner, I got the whole shot, went straight into the water and that was it, you know. Driving through the water, Walker almost sank at that point. I thought the race was over, but I got the bike going again, so, you know, that was the main thing. and. You know, I pushed as hard as I could, but only managed four. And here comes Johnny Walker. Doesn't really mean that much to him. He wants to be on the podium. You know, I haven't come here to, to come forth. You know, I come here to win the race. You're like a kid brother. Most of those guys are in their mid-30s or, or older. What's your relationship like with them? Is it intimidating? Do you feel like a kid? No, I get, I get on well with all the other riders. You know, off the track, we're, we're really good friends. But, you know, when we're racing, it kind of changes. Who is it that you want to want to beat more, more than anyone. I think mine's the same as everyone else's, you know, everyone wants to beat Graham. He's dominated the sport for the last three years, you know, he's won, I think every race there is, he's won, so. Do you tell him that? <laughs> no, I think he knows that, you know, when we're <laughs> hanging around together, we're joking and that, he, 
he knows that everyone wants to beat him. What does it take to, to be, for you think, to, to repeat and, and win this thing again? Uh, I think you've got to have a good team, you know, I've got an awesome team behind me and, you know, I'm just going to push as hard as I can. That's it? Yeah, just flat out, full gas. Well, good luck to you here Thank you. and uh, we'll catch up with you again in Romania. Cool. Yeah. Take it easy. Right on. Ricky, two things to take away from that. He's a pretty humble young man, but he's also very determined. He knows what he wants. You know, I love listening to the confidence in his voice, but he's very, very humble. When you put a riding gear and a helmet on that kid, he is a killer, and right now he is out front and doing an awesome job. And he's leading some of the world's best, like this man here, the GoPro view of Graham Jarvis. I love the respect that everybody has for Jarvis because Jarvis, let's face it, has kicked everyone's butt at this race multiple times. Ricky, he has, and that's a real thorn in his side because on three occasions he did cross the line first but was disqualified for various infringements. Approaching checkpoint four, three kings. And the crowd very appreciative of the way Walker does this. That's the time that you use the energy from the spectators. You hear them screaming for you because you're out there by yourself, beating yourself up. No, they talked about this. Is, this is a couple hours that they're going as hard as they can possibly go. We were listening to Johnny in that interview with Sal. He talked about flat out. So he's not saving any energy. He's going as fast as he can the whole time. But when you get to those little sections and you got the crowd cheering for you, helps a ton. Canada's Corey Graffender has put in a marvellous effort in this early phase to be the one chasing Johnny Walker in this hair scramble. Watch the descent here. This is incredible. Got to get your weight back, get as much weight on the back wheel as possible. As uh, Robert was talking about, you want to use the front brake, but you got to be really light because a little bit too much, you're going over the bars. So when you go down that fast, rear brake is locked, you're moving your body position. How do you, how do you uh, arrest that momentum so quickly? As we see Letty going down that hill, you can see the wheel jumping from side to side because when you lock it up, all of a sudden now you have a wall with those knobbies and it starts searching for the path of least resistance. So if you can, ease up on the brake a little bit to keep the wheel rolling a little bit, but you have to slow yourself down. And then as soon as you get to the bottom, right back up. And straight back into the forest. This is Letton Bickler. You hear that moan of a two-stroke, they put a heavy flywheel on there so it gives them a little better traction, but the two-stroke once again is a lighter bike, a little bit easier to throw around. This fight for fourth, fifth and sixth is really intensifying. England's Andrew Noakley, you got Spain's Gomez, and then America's Taylor Robert is really hanging in there with them. And Paul Bolton has joined the group. It's like a traffic jam. <laughs> we got a lot going on right now. So what you're doing is you're using the rider in front of you for their braking points. If they make a mistake, they're basically, you're using their line to coach you around. But really, you want to get past them because clean air is best. One rider who is chasing this group is Graham Jarvis. Had that hiccup at the beginning. Has been playing catch up, but has been playing catch up very effectively. I don't know about you, Lee, but I didn't hear that thing breathe one second going up that hill, so definitely wide open on the throttle for Jarvis. It's so calm, just going to leave the, the checkpoint and roll down this hill. Just another day at the office for Jarvis. Back up front, Johnny Walker has led almost the entire way. Ricky, can you hear those screams from the crowd on the bike? Most definitely. You use that like energy, like when you're jogging with an iPod, you want to make sure that you don't sit there and listen to yourself breathe. So if you can grab a little energy from the crowd and their enthusiasm, helps you out a ton. Look at this tight, technical, tricky section after he was just wide open on the throttle. It changes by the second. This is Grafender. I love the body, how they position themselves side to side because it's not just climbing, but you want to make sure that you don't fall off the side of the cliff as well. On board Letty. Great GoPro images. And look in the background. Look how high they are. 
in this ginormous iron ore mine that produces more than two million tons a year. The riders come off a real fast slick section. They gotta size it up. And as they're going, they can't just accelerate because the rocks spin so bad. So they're using their clutch as much as possible to keep from breaking that rear wheel loose and keep forward momentum. Two enormously experienced riders are entering this front group. David Knight, the three-time world champ, and Graham Jarvis. Here's Tina. Before the race, I got a chance to talk to Graham Jarvis's mechanic, Damian Butler, and he was taking me through the bells and whistles of the bike, but when I asked him about the suspension, he did not reveal a thing. He kept his cards very close to him, almost hinted that that was their secret weapon. Now what he did reveal was that even though Graham won last year, he is still very cautious out there when it comes to navigating. He does not want to get lost again. He is not afraid to get off the bike and make sure he is going the right direction. But I want to point out when I talk to guys like Johnny Walker and David Knight before the race, they said the guy they want to beat, Graham Jarvis. And Tina, we're watching Graham's progress with much interest. We told you earlier in the show that last year 153 guys did not even make it to the water pipe, and it looks pretty much the same this year. Hair Scramble 2014 here in Austria sees Johnny Walker continuing to lead the way over Graffender and Letton Bickler. And as our race leader begins to enter the section known as Machine, more importantly than that, it is a no-help zone. You are on your own through this section. As you can see, the spectators are pointing it from side to side, but if you look closely on the motorcycles, there's a handle that they put on the handlebars, so when they go through certain sections, not here, spectators can not help you, but in the machine, you're on your own. Think of the fatigue that's setting in already, and then add more gradient, more technical sections, and no outside assistance. That's just part of the challenge that makes Hair Scramble what it is. For now, let's check in with Sal. Attention, the North Americans are invading Ersberg. Names like Robert, Webb, Grunfunder, stars of the American off-road racing scene have made the pilgrimage and they are taking a crack at the world's toughest one day race. And some of them, they are packing with them a secret weapon. Dirt biking is the Goldilocks of the sports world. Stick with me. See, on one end of the spectrum, you got road cycling. 90% depends on the man. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you got car racing. Lots of machine. Smack dab in the middle, you got dirt biking. Just enough man, just enough machine. Perfect mix, right? Yes, you've got over 50 horsepower between your legs, but no one who's ever ridden can deny the pure physicality of course like this. Here at Ayersberg, adjectives like punishing, grueling, and exhausting are thrown around with more delight than the girlish screams at a One Direction concert. Which is exactly why some of the US challengers are packing a secret weapon. They call it the Recluse. You take a stock clutch and you put it on the shelf. You swap in a Korth EXP 3.0 auto clutch and say goodbye bike stalling. Hello, hardened duro. Corey Grafunder uses it, so does Taylor Roberts. Add in custom valve suspension, softer compound tires, and you've got a machine ready to tackle the Iron Giant. But that's only half the equation. A bike still doesn't drive itself up stuff like this. Dirt biking may have been popularized in the US, but the sport of hard enduro is ruled by the Europeans. Europeans who love tradition. The recluse, not traditional. But it might just take a non-traditional approach if a North American ever hopes to break onto the podium here in Austria. And Sal, that approach is very much personalized, Ricky, isn't it? Because you have got that blend of rider and bike, but then you've got strategy involved as well. How do you get up the hill? This is video from Letty last year where he shoots the bike to try to clear a really hard rock section because you can't just roll up there. So he sacrifices the bike to make it that little bit. Grafunder here, you see him working the angles, working the side, just more picking his way up through there. That's where the recluse can help you out. And Letty is through. And sometimes it's those really tight technical sections, Ricky, isn't it? That if you can clear that with minimal effort, that gives you that advantage, like Letton Bickler. Where you're using so much energy right here, you're probably going anaerobic. You have to try to 
manage your heart rate as much as possible and your strength because remember they're not even halfway yet so when you get to those flat sections sometimes you just take a break not attack and, and get your breath GoPro on board with Graham Jarvis continues to claw his way through this field after a poor start and once you get to the top, he takes a couple short shifts, starts to get, get his breath back and think about the next challenge. Wade Nigel Young and Ben Hemingway, seventh and eighth at the moment, as they continue to tackle the machine. Which maybe should be called the monster. <laughs> Well, this course is doing a couple different things. As you, as you notice, some of the big rocks are being pushed out of the way. Some things are pulling the riders down the hill. You can see the bikes are starting to steam because they're water cooled. So when you th drop a bike on a side on, in this kind of situation, you can break the radiator. So it could be the end of the day. And Wade Nigel Young's spirit may have been broken after dropping the bike just there. American Taylor Robert drops out of the top six as the defending winner, Graham Jarvis, enters it. Knight is in there. But it's all Johnny Walker leading the way. Hair Scramble 2014. Here we see him navigating up the narrow track. What's awesome about a race like Ayersburg is a lot like MMA. You know, where it's mixed martial arts, where they had jiu-jitsu, judo, boxing, all this different stuff. Here you have to pull from everything. Trials, enduro, motocross. You know, you have to make sure that you get a good hole shot. Motocross here, you're using trials techniques and enduro techniques to make your way around. You've got the most dominant trials rider in the world over the last two decades. Although he says he's semi-retired, Dougie Lampkin's in this event. But you need more than just trials experience, as Walker demonstrates. And while it's a frantic pace up on the track, it's a little calmer back at the paddock, as Tina tells us. Well, here's a look at what goes on behind the racing at Hair Scramble. Below me, you've got one of the paddock areas where about 1,500 plus riders show up every year to set up camp, prep their bikes, and try to tackle this iron giant. Now the celebration lasts about five days, but if you remember to bring your own hot tub, you can have some fun at the end of the day. How's the water, guys? <laughs> Only at Hair Scramble. <laughs> Thanks, Tina. Here is Andreas Lettenbickler. Real family affair this year for Letty. His 16-year-old son is also competing. That's amazing that a 16 year old has enough state of mind to, to make it around a course like this because you know how you've matured as a rider. We've seen some younger guys, some older guys, but my hat's off to a 16 year old. GoPro view just shows you the challenges at hand. If you notice, he's got two fingers on the clutch. He's feathering the clutch back and forth. The guys with the recluse can roll the throttle on and off and think about that only. But most of the guys are still running a, a manual clutch. Spain's Alfredo Gomez has raced all over the world in all kinds of conditions. See, it's a combination here. Here's a trials move. You you pop the front wheel up in the air, you bounce it around, do a complete 180, and they're still climbing. It looks flat on this GoPro image, but trust me, they are climbing pretty steep hills. So that's the top three. Here is fourth place Corey Greffender. And the chase continues. Graham Jarvis with a competitor ahead. combination of RPMs. Lee, they'll use the high RPM to climb the hill and then they'll go back to a low RPM and control that RPM with the clutch so they don't get rear wheel spin. You can see the big rocks, they got to navigate around, but if they have that throttle too wide open, what's going to happen? They're just going to spin and slide back down the hill. Gravity's going to take over. So it's Bolton that Jarvis is chasing. Devil's Root offers quite the challenge. Unbelievable. Guy takes the time, tell his mate cheers. Jarvis gets ahead of Bolton and continues his charge. David Knight is the next one on the list. The rider on everybody's list is Johnny Walker. As we approach more than two thirds distance, 10 kilometers, six miles to go, and Carl's diner awaits. Things become incredibly and increasingly difficult here, Ricky, as fatigue very much sets in. 
Here we see Johnny Walker going through another checkpoint. And if you notice, Lee, he's dropped his goggles, whether through sweat. A lot of times, these guys, when they're climbing the hills, they're breathing so hard, they want a lot more air to their face. If you notice, rocks can be your friend or your enemy. The small rocks can help you slow down. The big rocks sometimes can throw you on your head. And nobody knows that better than Walker himself from a couple of years ago, 2012, when he was actually the first to cross the line and win hair scramble for the very first time in his young career. Let's take you back, let's show you a replay of what happened to him, and it's pretty nasty. When a rider goes down, takes a hard hit like this, and then still comes back to win the race. Unbelievable, oh. you see the whiplash on his neck. I mean, it takes the wind out of me here watching it, but he jumps right back, gains his composure, and away he goes. And reiterating, he came back from that to go on and win hair scramble as he navigates the boulders. The body coordination and everything that he's got going on, but also notice the, the long legs, how it helps him get over these obstacles. A short rider like Ricky Carmichael, who they call the GOAT, the greatest of all time, would struggle terribly here because he doesn't have the leverage. Second on track now, and a man who is basically tired of finishing second in this event. He's done it three times. Andreas Lettenbickler. He begins his run in Carl's Diner. And Ricky, year after year, is there pretty much a sense of there is a known line through this section? In years past, guys would have to navigate down through here, but now you see that the trail is beat in a little bit more. That doesn't make it easy, but it does give the guys a sense of where to go. And with that, it's time for our key moments of this race. And the first one involves Graham Jarvis, the defending champion at the start. He gets checked by both Noakley and Grafunder, which causes him to get caught in traffic on the first climb of the event. And watch what happens. Competitors everywhere, he does not like it, loses momentum, crashes, which is costly time-wise. He did, however, regroup. Our second key moment involves race leader Johnny Walker. The only real mistake he made was taking the wrong line up the forest section. Bracing the bike against the tree saved him from falling back down. A little help from the marshals got him going as well. And that was before the start of the no help zone. And sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Or maybe good rather than lucky. As Lettenbickler ghost rides his bike to the top of this forest section. And there are our key moments of the race so far. Making some very good progress is Paul Bolton. And Ricky, he's made his way up to third. Do you think this section, Carl's Diner, is one of those parts of the race where you can really make your move? You may be better than navigating the boulders than some of your competitors? Well, when I raced Supercross, it was always attack, attack. And then when I started racing trucks down in Baja, I had a philosophy. Make time by not losing time. And as long as Bolton keeps moving forward and doesn't have any big delays by getting stuck on the rock, as we saw what happened to Johnny Walker a couple years ago, big, a big crash, you're doing good. So it's all about racing yourself and not making a mistake. Letty shows us just how you've got to be from one side of the bike to the other. And look at that, pedaling through with his left foot. This is where size is key, you know. We've looked at David Knight, they call him the Knighter. He's done, he's done well at this race before, has won it twice in the past. And I really think that his height and his size have helped him out. Look at that progress that Paul Bolton has made, getting ahead of Grafunda and Gomez and chasing down Letty and Walker. And the second place, Andreas Littenbeckler, Seems to be struggling in Carl's Diner here, Ricky. As you can see, there's not a defined line there, and Letty's off just a little bit, and he's losing a lot of time. Speaking of this section, and race leader Johnny Walker is almost through Carl's Diner, and when you know that you've got something as gnarly as this section of this 20-mile race, and you've got it almost complete, that's got to bring a sense of relief, doesn't it? A little bit, but you got to realize that he's going into a gang fight with like 10 guys, so he's basically beaten up five of them, but he doesn't know exactly what waits around the next corner. Or how far they're behind. But so far, Walker has been amazing. Incredibly consistent and pretty much error-free. Almost making it look easy. But in this event, where the majority of the competitors fail to finish, 
Just getting started is a reward in itself. Why in the world would anyone want to do this? The odds of actually finishing, minuscule. The odds of damage to body or bike, high. But even with those probabilities, for the past 20 years, riders from around the world signed on the dotted line. Canada, Italy, Germany, Spain, Great Britain, and the USA all represented on the starting line, if not the finish line. Sure, the pros get the glory, but the heart of this race is on the second, third, fourth, and fifth rows. Crazy weather, crushed exhausts, torn tires, blown suspension. But the motivation to line up never seems to be broken. What exactly is it about the world's toughest enduro that keeps these guys coming back? Maybe it's the beauty of the Austrian Alps. A once a year chance to race at a working iron mine. 1,499 of your closest friends on the starting line. 45,000 rabid fans along the course. Think about it. Why in the world wouldn't you want to do this? Ricky Johnson, you're an icon in the two wheel world. Is this something that you would consider taking part in? At this stage of my life, Lee, Hell no. With age comes a cage, <laughs> so I'll stick to cars. Go, Graham! What sportsmanship. That is Letty, Andreas Lettenbeckler, and Graham Jarvis overtakes him for second. Well, he's a smart man. He lets Jarvis go by, and now he's going to follow his line. So very, very smart riding by Letty. And that underscores the point you made before, Ricky, about how much Letty may have got offline through Carl's Diner, and that gave Jarvis the advantage. Up front, it is clean and clear, though, as it has been for almost the entire race for Johnny Walker. A lot of racers with a ton of respect for Jarvis, so if I was a racer, that's who I would want to follow as much as possible than try to snake him at the end. But a guy like Jarvis is really hard to beat. But this guy, Johnny Walker, unbelievable all day long. When you're in that zone, which I think I felt it a couple times, it's unreal completes another section flawlessly. It has been an incredible display. Looking down on the Iron Giant, this is Hair Scramble, part of the Red Bull Signature Series, and one of the toughest tests you can face as an enduro rider. Race leader continues to be Johnny Walker aboard his factory KTM, and we're nearing the end of this thing. Walker on the back of the bike, accelerating as hard as he can. But Lee, there's not too many sections on this racetrack where a guy can sit down and relax. So what he wants to do is take some deep breaths, get some blood back into those muscles, because right around the next corner, a whole bunch of technical. Yep, one of the final challenges on this 20-mile track. It's called Dynamite. It is right near one of the main explosive storage facilities at this active mine. Here's Tina. By the time I showed up to Carl's Diner, Johnny Walker had already made it through. Andreas Letton Bickler was just finishing up. He looked exhausted, but I did get a chance to ask him quickly how he was doing, and he gave me a very serious head nod. The big story, Graham Jarvis made a couple big passes and is now battling his way to the finish with a very, very determined look in his eyes. Tina, thank you. The last two winners of this event are now in the top two positions and have had two very different races, Ricky. For Walker, it's been setting the pace. For Jarvis, it's been chasing. And what would have happened if Jarvis did not go down on that first hill? He's been charging, he's had to work his way through traffic, but Johnny Walker has been out front and setting the pace. Johnny Walker and Dynamite. <laughs> kind of sounds like it goes together, doesn't it? A little bit like a punk rock band, but it's not. It's the leader of the hair scramble. And this shot really underscores just the gradient, how steep the gradient is, and what Johnny Walker and this field are dealing with. What Johnny Walker's doing, it's controlled chaos. He's off the back of the bike, he's off the front of the bike, he's using the clutch, he's letting the guys let, you know, guide him where to go. It looks easy, it looks sloppy, but it's actually perfection. Oh! 
does a little bit of ghost riding there at the end, but makes it to the top of Dynamite. Listen to the words of encouragement. Every little bit counts because you have to understand he's using 100% effort. If anyone's ever done CrossFit or powerlifting or anything like that, Johnny Walker's throwing around a 230-pound motorcycle and dodging cars and going through a steel mine. And spectators. Pardon me, I'm coming through. Now here is second place Graham Jarvis. Let's listen. See Jarvis so much of it just letting the bike flow, Ricky, as he kind of Fred Flintstones it through some sections. It's very smooth. He's he's so in contact with his clutch and his rear wheel. You know, Johnny seems to be a little bit more aggressive, but Jarvis seems to be a lot smoother going up dynamite. And the calls of back, back, back. Use up all the ground you can. Every inch counts. Now this is just like a whole shot on a supercross. Wide open, gets himself up there, and as we see Jarvis, cleans it. Another checkpoint complete. And the chase continues for defending hair scramble winner Graham Jarvis. What a comeback this has been. As Jarvis goes through the gears right now, once again, saving energy, getting ready for more battling to come. And not a whole lot of time to take in that beautiful Austrian Alp scenery. Here's Letty. And of course, all the spectators know exactly what to say. You're hoping that maybe it's one of your countrymen that can tell you, but all of them are cheering you on nonetheless. So you got to make sure you pick the right line. He's trying to tell him, get the heck out of the way. I'm coming through. Shots allowing us to be on the bike momentarily. This final run up dynamite, every inch counts. And if you notice, Letty sits back, takes a couple breaths, and then you have to give a 100% effort to get to the top. <laughs> Cleanly done. Very much in the style of Graham Jarvis. There's your top three. Now how many other riders will even make it up there? Already a massive percentage of this 500 strong starting field. Their day is over. For veteran Alfredo Gomez, it certainly isn't. He's still running in a strong fourth place. Gomez running a slightly different style. He's sitting on the back and using his feet as rudders going from side to side, but that little extra weight on the back wheel is giving him a little bit of traction. The factory Husqvarna rider completes his run through dynamite and does it cleanly. I have to say, he made it look the easiest out of all four guys. So top four are done with dynamite. So here's the first man to tackle Lazy Noon. As we listen to Johnny Walker, it goes from zero to wide open, and he carries it all the way up to the top and blitzes it. This Lazy Noon section was predicted to be very difficult and quite the challenge. Perhaps Walker once again made things look easier than what they are. Right now, Johnny Walker is in the zone. He is riding so well, he's not making any mistakes. Even his mistakes when he shot to the top of Dynamite he does it perfectly. The bike lands right at the top, doesn't have to turn around and go back down. So Johnny Walker is a man possessed. He's the man doing the chasing. Defending winner, Graham Jarvis. Check Lazy Noon off the list. Come on. <laughs> Obviously, we hear a little bit of frustration out of Jarvis, but at the end, still a polite Englishman tells him thanks. Our third place man, Andreas Lettenbickler. 
has been amazingly consistent today and perhaps another podium awaits. And that's three from three. He completes it beautifully as well. Second last checkpoint done. Oh, this is Gomez. He's in trouble. The fourth competitor to try and negotiate Lazy Noon. The first three made it look relatively straightforward, Ricky. Well, it looks like Gomez didn't hesitate as much as the other riders at the bottom and, and didn't carry as much momentum. So he went back down to the bottom, resized it up, and I'm pretty sure he'll get to the top. Speaking of the Americans that Tina just mentioned, let's go back to Dynamite. And first up, this is Taylor Robert. In the background, here comes Cody Webb. Robert and Webb travel halfway around the world to race against the world's best enduro riders, and now they're side by side on the track. Uncanny, isn't it? Used to competing against each other on American soil, now they're doing it on Austrian soil, and have done very well at their maiden performance at Hare Scramble. Well, Roberts has done something at home to try to help him be a better enduro rider. Obviously, he's very fast in the desert, but he started riding trials to help him through these technical sections. And oh. as he sets up, he gets passed. Cody gets a little cheeky. Is it going to pay off, though? That climb up dynamite is so steep. This is, this is Gomez, take two, ahead at Lazy Noon. You think he may have gone back and done what the others did? Exactly. You talked about it earlier. You got to get to the bottom, pick a point, and then charge towards it. And I think what happened before was Gomez just tried to, to do it in one motion. It didn't work, but second time's a charm. Taylor Robert rounds up Cody Webb. So although Cody got a little cheeky and opportunistic, it didn't quite pay off for him at the top of Dynamite. So positions remain the same. The Americans is going to be bragging rights on the flight home, so it definitely doesn't matter if they finish uh, second to last and last, the, whoever is in front is going to have the best ride home. And this is the only ride home. Johnny Walker approaching the finish to win Hair Scramble for the second time in three years. And the performance has been outstanding. This is the equivalent of the 20th lap in Supercross, just sucking it up, cheering on, getting cheered on by his family and friends and made it to the finish line. 23rd and final checkpoint. And Johnny Walker is now a two-time hair scramble winner. And all but passing half a dozen people in the opening sequence. He was all by himself out in front to see that checkered flag first. Two out of the last three years, Johnny Walker is the hair scramble winner in Austria. As a rider approaches the finish line, Lee, after a race this grueling, I can only compare it to the Baja 1000. You start to go back and you remember all the good and the bad and the ugly. And right now, Johnny Walker is on top of the world. And as he told Sal Masakela in that interview before he even began Hair Scramble 2014, I am going to go flat out right from the beginning. And he certainly did just that. It's time to celebrate in Erzberg. And so let's go to Tina, who's with our winner. Not only did Johnny Walker win this race, you dominated out there. In fact, you told me earlier you wanted to beat Graham Jarvis, and you did that, just that, making it look easy. How rewarding is this? Yeah, it feels awesome. I, I really can't believe it, you know, but I put a lot of work in before I ran, so, you know, kind of done a lot of training before, so did all that, and then, you know, this has come easy. Well, and the start, you took a big lead early on. Just how key was that for you? Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to get an awesome start and just, like, go as fast as I can, you know, right to the finish, and... And that's what I did, so, you know, I passed the guys um, early on, on that, I think like the third hill, and just went from there, really. Well, and in 2013, you had that horrible start. You finished fourth off the podium. How redeeming is it now to win? Yeah, it feels awesome, but, you know, knowing that I'd, I, uh, I had a fourth last year, it still doesn't feel good, but, you know, to eventually win fair and square, it feels amazing. Congratulations. You deserve it. Thank you very much. Guys, back to you. Tina, thank you, and here's our second place rider home, Graham Jarvis, and what a comeback it was. We talk about Taylor Robert buying a trials bike to get better at the rocks. I wonder if this guy's going to be practicing a couple more starts before next year. Yeah, that was the moment where he got a little caught out through the opening turn and the opening uphill where he got trapped in traffic. But when you consider the amount of traffic he had to come back through, and try and bridge that gap to eventual winner. 
Johnny Walker. It was an amazing comeback from the 2013 winner. And they're sharing their post-race notes. But it was more than just speed and maybe a little luck for Walker to get the victory. And our Red Bull signature moment exemplifies how he did it. In order to win, you need to take advantage of the terrain, especially with hundreds of riders chasing you. Choosing the right line at the right moment can be decisive. And Johnny Walker knows that. Early in the race, Johnny saw an opportunity that others didn't. He took the leap of faith while others crawled through that dip. And from that point on, he never looked back. After just missing the podium last year, the young Brit came back and claimed his second win here at Hair Scramble. And that's why Johnny Walker deserves our signature moment. And here's a look at the top 10. And Ricky, just to have your name on that is quite the accomplishment. We talked about it earlier. To finish the hair scramble is unbelievable. But when you make it to the top 10, great job. Every man gets to line up. We have some champions. We have some guys that didn't make it past the first turn. But they're all my heroes. They certainly are. And time to say farewell. Here's Sal. Thanks, guys. And thank you all for watching Hair Scramble from here in Erzberg, Austria. What an incredible test of both men and machine against these truly brutal conditions. The Iron Giant once again claiming its fair share of victims, but big congratulations to Johnny Walker getting the win and Graham Jarvis and Andreas Lettenbeekler rounding out the podium. I'm Sal Masekela, and we will see you next time. Auf Wiedersehen! <laughs>